Welcome once again to Product One's Technical Web Series. To, uh, I'm your host, Yulani. Today, we're looking at advanced framework design, and we're going to be touching a little bit on uh, Fastener design as well. We are having a separate video for Fastener design later on in the series, but today we're focusing on the advanced framework design. So we are continuing uh, with the, the sub-assembly that we were using last week where we showcase piping design inside Creo Parametric. If you have not checked out that video, please do so. Uh, so just to reiterate what we showed you last week, which was piping design, and what we are going to be showing you today, it's part of Creo Design Essentials. So what PDC has done, um, they have introduced Creo Design Essentials, which is uh, the base package of Creo Parametric and you have more uh, out of the box from your package. So you can do piping, cabling, advanced framework, fastener, and even rendering as well. So we'll go, go through some of these in the coming weeks uh, as well. So if you can actually think about, uh, if you take a role of a, a plant designer, you just finished doing your piping work or piping design using the PNI uh, D diagram, driving that. Now you're continuing on that, utilizing clear parametric, of course, but in this instance, you're going to utilize what we call advanced framework uh, design. So it's fully integrated inside clear parametric. As you can see, there is a framework tab there if you're having an assembly, especially if you've got clear design essentials or a license of this uh, framework extension. So for People who do not know advanced framework uh, uh, design is basically the capability that you get inside Creo Parametric that enables you to have a comprehensive library of profiles, joints, connections, and equipment to create structures such as these. So what I've done here is I've not completed the entire structure. I've left a couple of elements that are missing here. So as you can see, these are driven by curves. So how do I generate some of these profiles? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to choose from the available list of libraries to say that I want to use this channel beam. I get to even select the South African standard. I get to select the appropriate size. So now immediately after doing that, all that I have to do is just select the curve where I want to place the profile. And what I need to do as well is select the other curve as well. And while I'm still on this, I can even rotate that profile to manipulate it or tweak the where the profile is actually facing. I want it to face the other direction. Okay. Now, I don't have to do that inside uh, the profile creation process. I can also do it outside. Of, let's say maybe I forgot this one. I can also say rotate this at a particular angle and I'm happy with that. Now, immediately I realized that there's a problem. I'm having this profile over here interfering with this I-beam. So what I need to do is stop that uh, interference and I can do that in several ways. So the first method is I'm going to use a connector. So as you can see, there is an array of connectors that are available. I'm going to just choose the base plate. Now, what I like about this is the system itself offers you a guidance in terms of what to select first. As you can see, I need to select the profile side. So the profile side is this, and these are the option that the system is suggesting that I select. Not only will it put in the base plate, it will cut the existing profiles to up in appropriate size to accommodate what I've just done. Now, that's not the only way to fix interfering profiles that you just inserted in here. As you can see there at the bottom, I'm having this uh, channel profile going through this bottom plate. So I can do a couple of things here. I can say, how about I utilize the planar trim method where I select the profile and the area in which I want to use as trimming. And of course, this extends 
up to the other side as well. So I will just quickly move on to the other side and just say that this is what I want to do. And you can tell that it's actually easy in a sense that now I'm having a profile that is trimmed appropriately based on my condition here. So that is trimming of profiles. So now we can look at it this way. What happens if I already have a profile that I've utilized? In fact, this is a classic example of it. So if I open up this component here, not only do I have this profile, but it's got a very nice mitre cut there. Now the purpose of that mitre cut is because that profile is accommodating what you have here. So maybe I don't want to repeat this cutout. So here's what you can do. You can reuse certain profiles. I can say reuse the selected profile. And just like that, I select where I want to place the profile. Of course, the orientation might not be correct. As you can see, the orientation here is upside down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip that orientation. I also have a series of tools in here that enable me to manipulate the position of that profile. So for an example, I want to move it down relative to where the curve is. And that is you reusing an existing profile. Now, it is not only limited to profile this uh, technique, it's also extend over to sub -assemblies. So let's say maybe this substructure over here, this entire substructure, I wanna reuse it. So how do I go about it? So it's quite simple. I'm going to say, under sub assemblies, how about I reuse? Then I select the substructure which I wanna reuse, and then I select the appropriate curve, and just like that, I'm having a series of profiles as a sub assembly in there. So this, it shows the power of Creo Parametric Advanced Framework Design. Now, let's touch a little bit on the Fastener Design as well, because they complement each other. Please note, I am going to be doing a separate video for the Fastener Design. So there's many ways in which you can put in fasteners here. So I'm going to use one here where I'm having a series of points. So in this instance, I've got a couple of points in these uh, areas, particularly the base, the brace plate. Please note, if I were to open up one of those channels, you can see that there's no holes or cut out there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back onto here and say, how about I insert a fastener? So just like the framework, it actually guides you. It asks you the screw head size, the nut, side and so forth or oh, where's the point so in this instant i'm just going to select the point where i want to place my screw head and of course where i want to place the head of my nut now immediately by doing this it shows me a preview of my design of course here i get to manipulate the size of my bolt i also get to manipulate things like do i want a washer or not. I get to even choose from an array of standards for nuts and bolts and so forth. I get to choose what type of nut do I want to have on the side. I get to choose what type of washer do I want to have on the side. So it is extremely comprehensive. Yet again, we're going to do a deep dive on this. Now, because those two points are generated using what we call a pattern, it, it identifies those instances. Do you want to repeat what you've done onto the other instances? I'm going to say yes. Now, immediately, not only will it put in the fasteners in appropriate position, but it will also do the appropriate cutout. So if you've got a 10, uh, M10 hole, you need to have a certain tire size of, of, of hole there as well. So it generates this for you. If we can go back to that profile and there it is okay now that is a very nifty trick and of course i can extend it onto the other side by the sake of time 
uh, this quickly just do that as well. So I'm just going to say, how do you create a fastener? You select the point, you select the uh, surfaces, and just like that, you've got fasteners on the either side. Now, we've done profiles, we've created uh, uh, what you call brace plate or connectors, uh, we've trimmed fasteners, we've reused profiles and sub-assemblies. What about equipment? So equipment is items such as handrails and, and ladders or staircases, as you can see there. So now I want to create my own equipment. So essentially, I'm looking for a ladder that will start from here and finish right at the top of this structure, which is right there. So how I do that is pretty simple in a sense that I get to choose my equipment, whether it's a ladder or whether it's a stairs. I get to choose the type that I want. And just like before, it offers you guidance in terms of what to select first. And you can also tweak some of these values. For an example, the offset value here, I'm going to make it, let's say, minus 600 millimeters. Then what I'm going to do is it tells me here which items to select first. So in my situation, uh, this is how the sequence will go. This is the bottom. And that will be the top. And this is where I'm going to be connecting the ladder. Then item four, which is the offset or where the offset is coming from, is right on the surface over here. And then last but not least, I'm going to have that as my item five. And just like that, you will see a ladder or a stir in this uh, instance placed in the appropriate position. Now doing a handrail is pretty much similar in a sense that I get to choose the handrail that I want and follow the prompt that the system suggests. So what this means is you have extreme power given to the user of the software because 90% of the time this is a, a series of, of, of solutions or designs that are done by somebody that has got many years of experience when it comes to plant design or framework design. But this, it makes it easy to even a novice like myself in framework or structural design to do something like this. And that is the power of advanced framework design with a little bit touch on fastener design. So all that you need to know is this is part and parcel of the base package. If you need any information on that, please contact us at product one or leave comments at the bottom, we can reach out to you. Do not forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Until next time, goodbye.